Hey guys, this is Ben Hale with Easy Living Yards. Today I'm going to show you how to plant a plant so it won't die. We don't want that, right? So sometimes, I hear all the time people, <laughs> sometimes all the times, I hear people say that they have, they don't have a green thumb, right? They're, they touch the plants, they wither and die basically, right? So I'm going to show you the basics of planting a plant so it won't die. Really having a green thumb is all about just practice trial and error, and just getting used to knowing that sometimes things aren't going to work out. So the first part of planting a plant so it won't die is knowing your conditions, knowing the right soil, the right location you have, and what plants are adapted to that space. Now I have a free giveaway called the three easiest plants for your garden. These three plants grow pretty much anywhere, just about anywhere. There's a few exceptions of course, but no matter where you live in the United States, these plants will likely, one of these plants will likely grow in your soil. So I have a link uh, in the, on the, the, this video page, so go check out that out, and we're gonna plant one of those easy plants today. So right behind me here, I've got a, um, a Panicum virgatum, which is switchgrass. It's a native to the North American prairie, and it's a beautiful, beautiful clumping grass. It looks wonderful in the landscape. So this grass I have back here, let me pull it closer. So this beautiful grass is a variety called Cheyenne Sky. There's a couple varieties that look real beautiful. This one I chose for this specific location, which is right next to a tree here. Um, because it's a bit more compact, I don't want it to overtake the, the small tree when it's younger. And I think it'll really look great, especially all year round. These look wonderful in the winter. So anyway, I could talk all day about plants, but let's go on, get this plant in the ground so it can be happy and it can start growing. Now, when it comes to planting a plant so it won't die, you need a couple basic tools. First, a shovel, right? A standard, typical shovel. Pardon the shade here. This is the best camber angle I could get to make sure we could film this video today. A trowel also works, especially if it's a much smaller plant. Um, you can get away with just a trowel. I dug most of this hole with this little trowel right here. If you don't have a nice quality trowel, this is a trowel made by Corona. Um, it's aluminum, it's really nice, but don't, don't go out and splurge on a trowel if you're not gonna always be using it. You can pick up a $1 plastic trowel at almost any store you go to, um, and they work great. So uh, that's what you need for that, um, and that's about it. So when you go to plant your plant, you wanna plant it when uh, is that the best timing usually is in the fall. Um, the fall is the best time. You can see there's leaves around me. The trees are just starting to drop right about now. And uh, so fall is a wonderful time, but anytime the ground is workable, you can essentially plant a plant. It's just that you have to take a little bit more care of it in different times. So, you know, if you're planting it in a drought, you gotta make sure it's properly watered and that sort of thing. Uh, if you're planting it in the spring, you might have to deal with some more uh, weed competition, that sort of thing. So just things to consider. Now, when it comes to digging out your hole, you basically, I, I did the pre-digging here already, uh, you basically want to plant your hole or dig your hole so it's slightly larger than, than the plant itself. So you can see it's about one and a half times larger than the pot. That's about what you want for, uh, for digging a plant. Now, inevitably, <laughs> this is a perfect example with digging this hole. I decided, you know, this tree looked a little bit lonely by itself, and so it needed, it needed some help, it needed some plants. Um, so unfortunately though, you're, you're going to come up against roots. And if you are close to a tree, you want to be careful with damaging the roots. So here you can see I preserved a root here. Right underneath it is a much larger root that is even more important to, to, to be careful with. So you don't, you, you can see that, I can't, I don't know if you can see in the video, but there's a couple small scrapes on this. You wanna try and avoid even damaging the root just from scraping it. Um, also, you know, a lot of times there's non-ideal conditions you're working with. So this is a perfect example. I don't know if you can see here, but there's a rock, a big rock that is not going to be coming up. So. Sometimes you just gotta work around things that aren't ideal. I also had to chop out a root. There's one that was right here. Uh, 
<laughs> like that, yeah. So this route I decided to chop out, one, because it came close to the surface, and it was also crisscrossing these other roots. So eventually, as this tree grows, it could actually, um, you know, they could start girdling each other and, and hurting the tree. So, so that was the decision I made to remove this root. You wanna make as nice clean cut as possible. I just used some basic pruning shears like these here uh, to, to take care of that cut. The, the cleaner the cut, the easier the roots can heal and the tree can continue growing. Now the depth of the plant, you wanna dig this. It's hard for me to fit this pot in right now, but you wanna dig it um, so the plant will sit maybe just a little bit above the surface of the soil. And so that way you're not planting it too deep. If you plant too deep, you can kind of just uh, damage the plant. So let's go ahead and get this plant in the ground. Now you can kind of just work the plant out of the pot usually just by kind of bending the edges of the pot. You can see a lot of times, you know, people are afraid of, of being too rough. And, and rightfully so, you don't want to, you know, be incredibly rough. But at the same time, you can be a little rough with these guys and they can tolerate it. Now I have another pot here, uh, just like a, this is actually a concrete mixing container that I have most of the soil in, um, just so I could keep it off the ground and I can refill my hole later. But let's just kind of work this potting soil out here too. So I'm grabbing the base of the plant and gently sliding out the pot. All right, let's take a look at this root ball here. So a lot of potted plants, when you get them, the roots end up kind of girdling around the pot. So basically they grow to the edge of the pot and then they have nowhere else to go, so they start circling around. This one's not too bad actually. And so sometimes you'll get a plant where, okay, let's, let's zoom, let's look at the part where there's a couple. You get a plant where it's completely girdled you want to actually open that up. So a lot of people are afraid to be too rough with the roots. For, I'd say, nine out of 10 plants or even more, you can be kind of rough with these roots and the plant will do just fine. It actually, what it does is it encourages it, once it gets into the hole, to grow outward instead of stay in that hole. And so it makes the plant more drought tolerant as it, as it continues to grow, more resilient to stress as well. So what you can do is you can kind of use your fingers and kind of distress those roots a little bit. Just kind of work them out. You see how they're kind of teasing out here. You want to continue doing that all the way around the plant. So let's go ahead and do that. And again, you can be a little bit rough. Okay, so that's pretty good. You can see, as I was teasing that out, a lot of the potting soil came out, and that's okay. It's actually a good thing to get as much of the, the uh, original soil from the hole into this, into this hole with the plant so it can adapt to the new space and start growing. You don't want it to be so happy inside the hole that it doesn't grow out of it. So if you leave too much potting soil there, that's, that's what can happen. So let's go ahead and remove some of this soil that fell out, this, this potting soil, and we'll get this plant in the, in the hole. All right, so for getting it in the ground, all you do is you just, just kind of spread these roots out so they can, you know, if you think about how a, a plant naturally grows, the roots grow outward from the plant, right? So you just kind of want to do that. And again, you want to make sure that base of that plant is sitting above the soil level. So you can see my, my fingers are sitting at the soil level and you want it to sit just a little bit up. So now we're going to start filling it in with, with soil slowly. And again, we have pretty dense clay. So this is what it looks like. Uh, we've had a pretty dry weather recently. It comes out as these hard clumps. You wanna kinda of break that up so you have some nice nice uh, crumbly soil to fit in those fine roots. Get around those fine root hairs. So now just fill it in gently. Don't, don't dump everything in, but kinda of fill it in a little bit and then we'll get the plant situated. 
Again, the idea here is to give it a nice new home, get it as happy as possible, as quickly as possible. You can see I'm just kind of working my way around the plant right now, filling it in little by little around it. Now you notice I'm using the original soil. So that's really important. Uh, it used to be recommended to add a little compost or a little bit of fertilizer into the planting hole. Um, it's been realized now that that actually isn't helpful for the plant. It actually is detrimental long term. Again, we want the plant roots to grow out away from this original planting hole. And so if you want to fertilize, or I prefer compost, if you want to add anything after you're done planting here, you add it to the top. Okay, we're pretty much there. Let me add a little bit more soil around some of these exposed root hairs. Okay, and that's basically what you're looking at, guys. It's a beautiful new grass. It'll be happy here. Now, the last thing I am going to do, I don't know if you can see it here, I have this small pile of, this is, this is leaf mulch, leaf litter. So I'm gonna add this around the base of the plant. This will help keep weeds from growing. And it'll help lock in moisture. So it keeps it, uh, you know, nice and moist and happy when it's not raining. You don't have to water as often. You can also use wood mulch. It just so happens that this garden bed, I chose to use uh, leaf litter, leaf mulch. So all it is is, is leaves collected in the fall around here. In uh, Southwest Ohio, we get a lot of leaves about this time of year, as you can see. So this is a garden bed I made last fall. And so it's been sitting here for almost a full year now. And um, I put you know a couple inches of this stuff on here and it just it just loves it so it's great for the soil okay guys that's it so when it comes to planting a plant so it won't die there's just a few basics to follow again make sure it's a plant that can do well in the space so again go over and if you haven't checked out that guide this is one of those three plants i recommend the three easiest plants to plant in your yard so they won't die now again just to summarize, when it comes to planting a plant so it won't die, you wanna have the right plant for the space. You also wanna dig the hole a little bit bigger than your pot. If the roots are growing around the edge of the pot, so the roots are girdling the plant, uh, you wanna break those roots up. You even actually uh, can cut them or prune them or trim them, or you tease them apart if you can with your hands and to open that up. You then place the plant Kind of spread those roots outward as the, you, you would picture them growing in the soil if it just you know the plant grew from seed right there you spread those roots out and then you slowly fill back in the original soil from that hole and when you fill in that soil you want to kind of you know tease the plant around a little bit shake it around let the soil settle in there and then you want to make sure the plant is planted uh, slightly above the original soil level. That'll make sure that plant's happy there. If you plant it too deep, that can be a bad thing. So then, once you once you fill in the, you know, it's not gonna take all the soil, but once you fill that space back in, uh, you wanna come back, you wanna water that plant really heavily, make sure it's happy there, make sure it can really get settled in as quickly as possible. So what we're gonna do now is, as soon as I turn off the video, I'm gonna go get uh, a watering can, and we're gonna water this beautiful switch grass so it can be happy in its new place. I'm also going to plant some friends around it too so uh, it'll have a nice home, a couple buddies to live with here next to this beautiful maple tree. All right guys, I hope you've enjoyed this quick guide on how to plant a plant so it won't die. Now I want you to go out to your local garden center if it's a good time of year to be planting for you. Get one of those top easy plants and get it in the ground and just enjoy the beautiful success of planting a plant that won't die. Cheers.